If it's in Hampton Roads, it's on the Hampton Roads Show. All right, happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Hampton Road Show. Our live audience today is from Norfolk Senior Services, and they are hosting some great information presentations this month about the new Medicare open enrollment. We're going to get all the details from them coming up a little bit later. We have two chefs in the Hampton Road Show kitchen today. Steve Gellis from Primo 116 Bistro Italiano in Suffolk, and Scott Simpson from Swan Terrace at the Founders Inn in Virginia Beach. They're giving us a sneak preview of this year's March of Dimes Signature Chefs Auction with a little chef throwdown. Who will win? Go we for it, win. guys. <laughs> we win when two chefs are in the kitchen. Hey, today the Cedar Hill Cemetery is our postcard. It's a final resting place, but some believe its inhabitants can get a little restless. We're going to stop by the spirited spot in today's postcard from Hampton Road. And our friends at Bayport Credit Union want you to strap on your sneakers and walk for a good cause next weekend. Coming up, find out how you can help support this year's Alzheimer's Memory Walk. Hump day, Wednesday. Up the hump, and then yeah. it's all it's downhill. downhill from there. I am really looking forward to postcards. It was I really too. neat. Taking Depend us into a cemetery? Yes, but I mean, it's the Cedar Hill Cemetery in Suffolk. It's very mm -hmm. different because of the tall mm -hmm. trees and the rolling hills. It's not like right. flat, you know. Um, but it kind of brings up our first hot topic, which is because there have been some who believe that there has been some paranormal activity in that cemetery and in places all over Suffolk and I think when you talk about an area as old and historic as Tidewater not only just how old these communities are some of the first in the nation but then when you talk about Civil War history and battles and trauma and death and Whoa. bad stuff you know Whoa, spooky. so we're <laughs> asking you this morning are you one of those who believes you've ever had kind of like a paranormal experience do you kind of believe maybe other people who say they have, or are you like 100% skeptic, no way, no how, these things don't happen? I think it's, I, I'm kind of on the fence, but I'm, I'm not 100% no, this does not exist, because there have been moments for me when you're just there, and then all of a sudden you're, you, you think you see something out the corner of your eye, you yeah. just double take, or you just don't know, um, and of course we were talking before the break, all of you guys' stories, and I've had people tell me about stories, how little kids have seen someone, or their grandfather, or I, I'm not going to, I'm going to say it's, it's yeah. possible, it's very I, possible. I, I'd like to not believe, however, when I was a kid growing up in our house, we, I had moments a couple of times where I saw a man standing over the bed, like a shadow of a man just standing there. Not, not, not just myself, but my mom as well. She woke up screaming uh, several times that the, the man was there, the man oh, was there. And I'd like yeah. to not believe, but those things felt so real as a kid. Yeah, for and me. I'd, I'd like to not believe, but. There's yeah. a couple instances that sort of happened to me. When I listen to someone, it very much is like, comes down to, do they seem like a mm -hmm. sane, you know, <laughs> normal <laughs> person who's telling me the story? But I will, not sane. I will admit that while there's a fair amount of skepti skepticism and I don't know, maybe it comes from being a journalist, I am respectful and recognize mm -hmm. that I don't know all there is to know about this world. I don't. We don't know. We don't know all there is to know about. Our brains, yeah, you know. So I, you know, I keep an open mind. Possible, are, yeah. are there spirits around us? I mean, are there? You know, I don't. Mm -hmm. We don't really know. Yeah. Part we of me likes the idea. Yeah. I mean, in my f faithful life, mm -hmm. I believe in this that there is a, that we all have a separate spirit, mm -hmm. you know, from our bodies. It's just part of my faith. But I like the idea of loved ones maybe looking out for me. Mm -hmm. I don't like the idea of them popping up around the corner, you know. <laughs> but I like the idea of, <laughs> hey, of spirits kind of being around. Yeah. As I know, long I, as they wear like a little bell around the <laughs> neck. <laughs> Is that something. here in the kitchen? Don't yeah. spook me. But I think right. that's, a, that's a good topic. Say, so, hey, do you have experience with mm -hmm. that? Do you believe in it? Do you have a friend who maybe saw a ghost? I mean, yeah. It's, Are you it's, like a no way? No way, no way. Yeah, and that story, like that will probably, that's stuck with you. You just remember it, that it moment. It seems so real. Oh, man, that is, my that mom, my mom's me. watching, I know, and she goes, yeah, I remember that. And I she believes that too. So. Yeah. Was, my eyes are watering. That's true. And interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to try to keep still because my mic is going a little in and out. But um, so who still writes checks? Raise your hand. Do you still write checks? Yesterday. Audience, do you guys yeah. write checks? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they all write checks. Um, our second hot topic is kind of the art of check writing is kind of lost nowadays. And you know what, Carrie? I'm just going to have you just talk about I'll my talk about it. It's, it's like what, what in school out. are you in? Are you in the new school or are you in the old school? Old school, of course, you've, you've you took care of all your bills with the, with the checkbook. Mm -hmm. well, nowadays, everything's filed electronically. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, some people think that the, the art of writing a check is 
lost and it's dying <laughs> and and th th that's one way of expressing yourself and a really good way of keeping up with your finances so uh, are you new school or are you old school how do you do it is everything done electronically do you know what the bottom line is do you still balance a checkbook mm -hmm. uh, you know I know my wife takes care of a lot of the bills in the house do you and so still we do order sort of personal watch personal checks with pictures of butterflies <laughs> and puppies on them yeah, I mean, that's one way of expressing yourself. I don't have any butterflies. Or Do you have the Mount Rushmore chaps? <laughs> I've, I've got the yeah, gunmetal yeah. gray with bullets on my <laughs> right. No, I, I, I write. Some places only accept checks. I pay mm -hmm. my rent I, with a check, um, but everything else I pay, I do online electronically. Mm -hmm. and I remember my dad showed me how to write a check, and I don't, you know how you have the check where you have the, the back cover of it, it's the, keeps the copy of it, the, the carbon The carbon, thing. yeah. I don't have that part. I just have the check, and I don't balance it still. Mm. Yeah. Well, my 13-year-old uh, my is in I a like financial skills class right now. I'm just going to ask him See, if they're, 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 they're teaching him check writing. So, so wait, 13, I'm old I school? Uh, I write checks? Am no, I, old I mean, if old you want to be old like, school, yeah, you're old, old school. school. If hey, you bring yeah. a goat and a bag of onions to sell your check. That's real old school. old school. That's like Viking. It's like Jeremy Wheeler. I'll trade you three goats for friends. That's medieval school. <laughs> no. All right. A couple ways. Is that it for our topics? I yeah, don't remember. Yeah, we had two. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Paranormal, Paranormal and ghosts. Activity. Do you believe in ghosts? <sighs> I don't know. All right. Two ways you can join our conversation. Go to our Facebook fan page. And by the way, on our Facebook page earlier, I posted a video from Cedar Hill Cemetery. Watch it. It's creepy. Judge for yourself. Uh, go to our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter at HR underscore show. And now Hello. Jeremy Wheeler's here. Yep, swapped out with Chris. He uh, had to go to the kitchen. We'll get All back right, to him. It was like magic. Bit. Yes. Bing. You don't believe in paranormal, but here I am. That's oh. right. Magic. Are you really? Yeah, he's around. What about you? <laughs> Are you skeptical? You're a science guy. I think. No, uh, I'm a firm believer in uh, the spirits. Are yeah. you? You can go, you know, the spiritual route, you know, which a lot of people believe. And, uh, you know, I believe that a little bit because of my faith. But Has also. Has something um, happened to you? Like you have a particular story? Uh, not exactly. Uh, maybe once when I was a kid, I thought I saw something. Uh, and it wasn't, I don't think it was anything. But um, also the science aspect of it, you know, you get all this energy. I mean, you know, you, you get all these particles in you, you get, uh, you know, energy flowing through you all day long. It's got a cognitive presence. And so, you know, that energy, why can't it just keep going a little bit? You Where know, does your it body go? Shuts down. So, you know, maybe uh, that's what I think. So there's, there's two sides of it, two possibilities, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, something to be explored. All right. All right. <laughs> well, with that said, let's take a look at the. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I got a little too nerdy. I got a little too nerdy there. No, that's <clears throat> Let's take a look okay. and see what's going on with the forecast. This is some more science coming at you here, so um, bear with me. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, chance for some scattered showers. We've seen some already. We're going to see some more today. A few thunderstorms mixing in, in the afternoon. Temperatures in the upper 70s. And then tomorrow, 78, we'll see some more scattered showers out there as well. Maybe a few thunderstorms. Friday, that's the early stuff. Should start ending though as we go through the midday and afternoon, and then by Saturday and Sunday we got sunshine, high pressure builds in, and temperatures going to be near 70 Saturday and low to mid 70s on Sunday. So we got some good weather there. All right, let's take a look at the uh, pop quiz for today. Here are the four clues. The first one: East Norfolk to Virginia Beach. That should be a giveaway right there. Mm -hmm. 60 is the next clue. It's mostly near the water, mostly. And then uh, famous Polly from the 80s and 90s. So, okay. you know, we got, we got some pretty good clues in there. I think you'll be able to put this together and uh, come up with a good answer. So I think good you're luck. Right. All, All right. right. Today's winner will receive haircuts for four at Supercuts. Save a little money there on the family there trimming. You go. Everybody goes at one time. HamptonRoadShow.com, right. <laughs> submit your answer. All right. Chris is in the kitchen today with two chefs. All right, we got two guys getting ready to battle it out. And in honor of this year's March of Dimes Signature Chefs Auction and Wavy TV 10's long-standing support of the event, for the past several weeks on the Hampton Roads Show, we've put the best chefs in Hampton Roads in our kitchen for a little preview of the Signature Chefs Auction. Today, we have two more fantastic chefs, Steve Gallus from Primo 116 Bistro Italiano in Suffolk and Scott Simpson from Swan Terrace at the Founders Inn in Virginia Beach. These two guys are going to make two wonderful dishes. And uh, Steve, we're going to start with you. What are you making us? I'm going to make a um, ricotta gnocchi with some uh, lobster meat, main lobster meat, claw and knuckle meat with a little mascarpone cheese. Okay, so you're going to make a little lobster dish for us? Yes, lobster dish. Say it one more time for me. Gnocchi. Uh, I got no, I got no chance at that. Don't, <laughs> don't make me repeat that. <laughs> Scott, what do you got on tap? Mine's easier. Mine's bacon wrap wild swordfish. <laughs> bacon wrap wild swordfish. Okay, so we got swordfish and we got gnocchi. 
with lobster. Hey, that was <laughs> worth a try. Okay, so you're going to get cooking in just a minute, and we'll be back. And uh, we'll start with Scott, then we'll go to Steve, and then later on we'll try it. So stick around. Okay. All Nucky. right. <laughs> Nucky. All right. Still ahead on the Hampton Road Show. Fashion can be a challenge for all of us, finding the right shirt, the right pants. People with physical disabilities have some greater issues. We're talking with a woman today who is helping all people find the beauty in their lives. Coming up. And Bayport Credit Union is doing its part to give back to the community. Coming up, find out how you can help be a part of this year's Alzheimer's Memory Walk. Stay with us. Back in the kitchen now to kick off the Signature Chef's preview face-off. And today we begin with our first chef, Scott Simpson from Swan Terrace at Founders Inn in Virginia Beach. Scott? Good morning. What do you got for us? Well, today I'm preparing uh, one of the items from our menu. Mm -hmm. We just rolled out a wonderful new fall menu. And one of the items on there is Virginia's freshest catch of the day. So I've worked out an arrangement where a seafood company delivers me like 15 to 20 pounds of their very freshest fish each day and we kind of create something based on that and feature it in the restaurant. So today I had a wonderful uh, wild local swordfish and I'm um, using that. So, so we're going with swordfish, huh? We're going with swordfish. So I'm going to accompany the swordfish with a few other local items mm -hmm. here as well. Um, I have some fabulous mushrooms right. that uh, are foraged locally. These are oyster mushrooms. So I'm going to start by taking those and getting those prepared for our dish. They look beautiful. Yeah, these are, are just different varieties of oyster mushrooms. They come in a cluster like this. And all I simply do is take them, put them on a tray. There's grays, there's the yellows, there's the goldens. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of chopped garlic on top. Mm -hmm. I'm putting a little bit of olive oil. Oyster mushrooms because they're, they're in clumps? Because they grow in a cluster, yep. similar to an oyster. Yep. Let's just take a little bit of salt. Okay, and then I'm going to put pepper on here. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Yep. And I'm using, um, for cooking today, everything local. So even the, the garlic that you see here is mm -hmm. elephant garlic. It's grown locally. I just toss this around like that, get a little bit on there, and I'm going to pop those into the oven. And those will cook now, and I, and I can just hold them when they're done. If you can put them on the top point. of them, please. No Thank no you problem. very much. Okay. The oyster mushroom is in the oven. Now what do we got? These are some nice leeks, and I think that they go well with the dish. It's kind of a rich fall dish, so the mushrooms and the leeks. And I was just going to show people. I, I usually just take my leeks, cut them starting from here, and cut them in rings this way. And then what I do is run them. First, before I saute them, I run them under a little bit of warm water in the sink. Right. It takes out a little bit of the acidity. And then I'm going to saute those up right here. Mm -hmm. So let me just put this over here, and I'll put in a little pat of butter, some of the elephant garlic. And then I'll, I'll, these are the leeks that I ran under the hot water. Okay. And I'll just go ahead and put those in and let those simmer for a second. Okay. Um, so the main, main part of the dish, besides the wonderful leeks and the local mushrooms, is going to be the swordfish, right. obviously. So over here. Wow, that's a nice looking I have cut. a nice loin of swordfish. And I ask them to get me from uh, the smaller part of the fish. And the way the swordfish comes, you can get, it's, it's a, almost like a pie that's cut in fourths right. around a huge bone. And I get the top loin center cut. If you go to your, um, the market and you can ask for that cut, it's a little easier. Then I cut it into these size steaks right here. These are six ounce steaks. Okay. That is a beautiful filet. So this is my take on uh, bacon wrap filet. Right. So what I do is I have some, have some bacon here. This is actually um, local as well. Smithfield Farms. Mm -hmm. It's their um, platinum um, applewood smoked. Let me just give this a little toss. Okay. And so I take actually the fish, put it in the bacon like so, and just roll it up. Just roll it over. Thank you for helping me there. No problem. And what I do with this, what I'm doing is just kind of stretch the bacon a little bit, Chris, mm -hmm. just so it's, it's closed all the way around and it's not too thick. So you can see the bacon, I let it get to room temperature where it sort of stretches out a little bit. Right. That makes it um, a lighter, a little more elegant finish rather than something you have to work at cutting through. So after the I get my, I'm gonna, good. They're, they're nice, right? Yep. So I put those over there. I'm going to sprinkle those with a little salt and pepper later. Let me move the swordfish out of the way. And I'm going to get this just a touch hotter. Okay. Meantime, I'll do the marinade here for the fish. Right. Um, basically, I'm going to roll this bacon out of the way. I'll use that in a second. I, I'm, I'm keeping it simple with the same set of ingredients here. 
What I'll do is take a little bit of fresh rosemary, okay? Um, take a nice lemon. I'm going to use some extra virgin olive oil. Right. And then the garlic. I just give it a little rub with the garlic all around, mm -hmm. okay? And take this, the lemon, and, you know, another simple thing I do is just cut off what I call the cheeks of the lemon. I just cut off on the outside. It helps me avoid some of the seeds, and it's easy to just squeeze this on top. Right. Oops. So I squeeze a little bit there. And then sometimes I take what's this and I cut it very thin. If you cut this like as thin as you can, you can actually toss it in the marinade. And you can sprinkle a little oil on there for me. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Salt and pepper. Got about a minute left. Okay. Here. You want to put the pepper on? Yep. Just gotcha. right there. Grind that. And then I, I cut the rosemary, but you don't want to cut rosemary too much. It starts to get bitter. So I just give it one quick cut through, right. sprinkle it on there. Definitely smell so, that. So you can put that, just like that, you toss it around, put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in the refrigerator, and it's uh, easy, to, easy to work with from there. So I have one other one that's been marinated for a few hours. You see this right here, and the lemon actually starts to kind of cure the meat almost. So pans, get the pan nice and hot. And you see the bacon's kind of wrapped around. I mm -hmm. start with the side where it's going to be the, the seam down. Mm, there we go. All right. So I'm going to brown this on all sides. Yep. And then I basically take this pan and put it into a 350 degree oven and finish it because it's nice, thick, and I want it to stay moist and juicy and not get too cooked on one side. So all I'll do is turn this slowly, get each side, being careful for the bacon not to come off. But the bacon sort of melts away in the pan. Oh, it wow. just continues to kind of baste it as it cooks. So it's the flavor. It's, it's a wonderful flavor. You guys are pretty excited about this uh, Sunday's event, right? Oh, of course. It's a great opportunity for our, our resort. Yeah. actually does some major gala events in the, supporting the community, and this is certainly one of them that, that I'm excited about. Okay, uh, March of Dine Signature Chefs event is this Sunday at Founders Inn in Spa, Virginia Beach. Uh, you can check it out more, uh, hrsigchef.com or 361-0000. Scott Simpson, can't wait to see how the swordfish turns out. Looks great, and thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you very much, Chris. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, in the buzz. You know, I've never had swordfish. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I have. Never had sword. I before. like it. Did you see that? No. Uh, <laughs> I <in> gotcha. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. One of our uh, hot topics this morning, your postcards. Yes. And you know what? The postcards is really not just about that. It's yeah. A part of it because, I mean, Cedar Hill Cemetery, if you can get over the fact that you're in a cemetery, mm -hmm. it's really a beautiful, beautiful yeah. and historic place. Mm -hmm. But it can be very creepy. But it can be spooky, so we wanted to know... Are you a believer of paranormal activity? Yeah. Have you ever had an experience where you thought maybe you weren't alone? Do in the room? Do 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 do. All right. Uh, Irene Bailey says, my whole life is paranormal activity. Mm. <laughs> Jennifer Tennyson says, I totally believe in paranormal activity. However, there are those shows that I don't feel represent the activity properly. Ratings yeah. can sway a lot of TV shows one way or another. All right. Gunny Molly, which makes me wonder, Gunny, are you a Marine? <laughs> Are you? Tell me. I want to know. Because the only gunnies I ever know are, you know, gunnery sergeants. All right. Uh, anyway, totally separate uh, conversation. Uh, Gunny uh, Molly says, I believe in everything. I mean, you never know who's right, and you don't want to upset the thing you can't see. That's true. She doesn't want to make the ghosts mad by saying, I don't believe in you. Yeah, so don't, don't, don't scare you them. Make them feel like they've got to prove it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Write them a check or something. I don't know. <laughs> Are, do, do people write checks anymore? That is our second hot topic. Um, I said I still write checks. Well, for rent, that's probably about it. Uh, Louisa says I don't too. I don't write them often, but trust me, many do. She says, speaking from the perspective of a bank teller, Kimberly says the only place I write a check is at the hair salon, only because they don't take debit or credit cards, and I don't always have cash on me. Uh, Garland Langhorn Jr. says I still use checks every once in a while, and if my bank starts charging me for using my check card. I will be writing a lot more checks. And that's the thing. Some places just take checks. That's mm -hmm. all they do. So mm -hmm. you have to write a check. But uh, it's interesting. We read an article this morning. A guy was having to show a young girl how to write a check. So mm -hmm. you think Jenny and Samuel will be writing checks? Uh, I have no sure? idea. I don't know. It depends. If there are little glove box in their spaceship, we'll hold their checkbook <laughs> maybe. It just depends. I don't know. Uh, well, thanks, guys, for sending us your comments on Facebook and following us on Twitter. All right. It is one of the largest events in the nation to raise awareness and also money for research and programs. We're talking about the Alzheimer's Memory Walk. Our friends at Bayport Credit Union are big supporters when it comes to the community events. And next Saturday's walk is no different. Take a look. 
I'm standing here at Port Warwick in Newport News, where as you can see, the park behind me is empty right now. But on October 22nd, there's going to be tons and tons of people here lending their support to Alzheimer's, one of which is Bayport Credit Union, which is a regional sponsor. Maria Owens with Bayport Credit Union, your branch manager. Tell me about your support and why you guys threw yourselves behind this cause. Well, Bayport is a community chartered credit union, and we're active in a lot of community things. Um, Alzheimer's is one of our very biggest promotions that we do during the year. We not only are the regional sponsors, but we also have a team of about 50 members of our teams on staff. This year we we're setting up some fundraisers that would be uh, exciting to the neighborhood to get out and, and get involved. We are having uh, salsa night October the 13th. Everybody that eats at salsa will be able to give 10% of their purchase to the Alzheimer's Association. We also are having a fundraiser with Marriott. City Center Marriott will all donate us a room on December the 2nd for Holly Dazzle. Mm -hmm. And they will get to spend the night there, have dinner there, have a parking place, and get to see the fireworks and the lighting of the tree. So you can buy those raffle tickets at any of your locations at Bayport Credit Union. Yeah, so when people come up and finish the walk, they'll be coming up this walkway right here. Why is it important for Bayport to get so involved in community events? Bayport feels like that we are the community. Our members are the community. And when we look into our membership, all of our membership are having the same difficulties. We see aging in our membership and a lot of people who are getting this disease and it's affecting not only the member, it's affecting their whole family. So it's very important that we get out in the community and be the voice for someone that cannot be the voice for themselves. On the day of the walk, our booth will have a face painter, okie dokie face painting. Mm -hmm. She will be fa painting faces or tattooing for all the kids and all the adults that would like to do that. So it'll give it a fun spin. Uh, we're going to have lots of more entertainment. Uh, but it's a fun day here in City Center and it's right in in Newport News. When you come out to the walk on October 22nd, you'll see lots of these flowers in different colors in the ground, but they mean something that's very, very important to the walk. I'm here with Rona Outschuler, the chairperson for the walk. Tell us about these flowers, what they mean in the different colors. Um, this year, first time ever, it's a national signature event for our walk. Is It's called a Promise Garden, mm -hmm. and there are four different flowers. Each color represents another aspect of the disease. Blue flowers will be given to those that have Alzheimer's that are with us. Um, yellow flowers will be given to those people that are here because someone they love or care for has Alzheimer's. Uh, purple flowers given to someone who has lost or knows someone who has died from the disease. Mm -hmm. And the orange flower will be given to those who are here because they support our mission, which is a world without Alzheimer's. What is the overall goal of the walk? What do you want people to take away from this? Um, we want them to know that they're not alone and that um, we are fighting for a cure and that there is hope, hope in numbers, hope in uh, being together. And there's a wonderful uh, Alzheimer's Association in this area that will help them and that we're here to help and you know, get answers to their questions. And if they can't make it physically to the walk, you can always donate. It's a great cause. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, Rona, thanks so much. And we'll look forward to seeing these spin, spin all around here in the park. Absolutely, thank right, you. Thank you. That day. All right, again, the walk to end Alzheimer's is next Saturday. It's actually the 22nd at 10 o'clock at Port Warwick in Newport News. I like the healthy fundraiser. Mm -hmm. The healthy and fun fundraiser. Yeah. Put I the mean, fun in it. We're a very fit, uh, active community, I think, yeah. by and large in Hampton Road. So a lot of folks are going out for a long walk or a long run on the weekend anyway. So why right. not just support a cause. Just do it with just a lot of people. Do it. Just do like it. last week's JT walk, lots yeah. of people are having fun there. That's right. All right, still ahead on the Hampton Road Show. If you spook easily, you may want to skip this week's postcard from Hampton Roads, but if you can appreciate the natural beauty of the Cedar Hill Cemetery, then it is a don't miss for lovers of nature and history. And don't forget our pop quiz. You could win a family four pack of haircuts from Supercuts. Just log on to HamptonRoadShow.com and click on the pop quiz button on the top right hand corner of the screen. Welcome back to the Hampton Road Show. Medicare open enrollment is earlier this year, starting this Saturday, October 15th, and this year's open enrollment lasts longer to give Medicare beneficiaries enough time to review and choose their coverage. Here now to tell us more and who can help us a little bit in all this paperwork is Fran Anderson from Senior Services of Southeastern Virginia. Fran, this is a very complicated issue for a lot of people. Tell us why it's so complicated. 
There are a lot of different choices in terms of Medicare Part D prescription drug plans. And the right choice for you depends on your medical history and what your issues are. So Senior Services of Southeastern Virginia has trained benefits counselors that can sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and discuss what your options are. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there right now who are falling into this category. Is that true? Absolutely. Um, the open enrollment period, which starts on October 15th and ends December 7th, is an opportunity for Medicare beneficiaries to look at the Medicare Part D options and make their choice. And this year, we have a lot of baby boomers who are turning mm -hmm. 65. So they're new to Medicare and all the complexities. So they really can use some help. OK, so for somebody watching that is new to Medicare, what is the first thing they need to know? My advice would be to call Senior Services mm -hmm. of Southeastern Virginia at 461-9481 and make an appointment. And our benefit counselors will meet with you and explain all the complexities. Now, you said there's so many different options. Is that part of the complexity of it? Yes, sir. That is the complexity of it. And because we're a local nonprofit, uh, the information we give is unbiased. Let's talk more about um, prescription drugs. I mean, that's what one of the major issues with this, isn't it? Right. That's what the Medicare Part D coverage is about, is covering your prescription drugs. And different plans have different coverage for different drugs. And, and so much of this revolves around insurance companies and their willingness to work with people. Is that sort of the, the hassle? I guess it is. Um, different insurance companies offer different options. Once again, uh, what do you advise someone who, I mean, we've got a few people here that are on Medicare. What have they learned through the process in open enrollment? I think they've learned that it's an individualized process that uh, to come to senior services for that benefits counseling is essential to making sure that you get the best coverage. All right, Fran, thanks so much. So please call 757-461-9481 or 222-4512. If you live in the metro area, Chesapeake, Norfolk, Portsmouth, and Virginia Beach, or 328-4217 or 449-8706. If you live in western Tidewater, Franklin, Suffolk, and Isle of Wight, and Southampton counties, to schedule a phone or in-person appointment, uh, more information, please visit sssseva.org. Fran, thanks so much. And I know this is a difficult time for a lot of people. They need to get it done right. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, well, the weather will be turning cold soon, and that means those energy bills will start to creep up again mm -hmm. as the heaters come on. So that also means a lot of families will need help uh, staying warm. That's mm -hmm. why Dominion Power created Energy Share Assistance Program now in its 30th year. If you think you'll, help, you'll need help with your winter energy bills, you can call 1-866-DOM-HELP to find out more. And if you can contribute to Energy Share any little bit helps, you can always log on to www.dom.com. Still ahead on the Hampton Road Show, if you think picking out something to wear is a pain, imagine how difficult it can be if you are disabled. Up next, we'll meet a woman who helps professionals dress for success no matter their situation. And Scott Simpson from Swan Terrace at the Founders Inn has finished up his Virginia's freshest catch of the day, and now it is the surfing chef Steve Gellis' turn to throw down in our March of Dimes Signature Chef Challenge. We're going to get started in just a moment. We are back in the kitchen uh, now to uh, kick off the Signature Chef's preview face-off. Uh, Chef Scott Simpson from Swan Terrace at Founders Inn already made his Virginia's freshest catch of the day. Now it's time for Steve Gallus from Primo 116 in Suffolk to try and out-chef him. <laughs> Is it really this competitive? He's making ricotta nachi or nookie? Nookie. Nookie. Not nookie. <laughs> ricotta nookie with Maine lobster. <laughs> You did that on purpose. You're right, you? I did. I did that on purpose for you. All right, we're not making nookie, but okay. there it is, right? Yes. Here's the ingredients. Very quickly, we've got some uh, Maine lobster claw meat and uh, knuckle meat. We've got some shallots, garlic, some fresh herbs, which, is, uh, which are parsley, uh, thyme, and a little bit of chive. This is mascarpone cheese, which is a, like a cream cheese, mm -hmm. Italian style, sweet. Not these, as thick. Not as thick. These are English peas, and the way you can tell is that they have a an accent. British, <laughs> clip British <laughs> accent. <laughs> you got a British accent. All right. Once again, what is that called? Because I don't want to mess that up again. These are called gnocchi. 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 And all right. What is that? 
Traditionally, they're made with potato and potato flour, but I make them with ricotta cheese, which mm -hmm. makes them a little bit lighter. So, so is, there something, is there something in the middle, or is it just? No, it's, it's almost like a dumpling. Oh, okay. It's an Italian dumpling. Sweet. Okay. All so right, we'll throw see. some of these into the water. We'll get, get these gnocchi. boiling. Put it in, a in the water. All right, we'll let those start cooking up. We've got some hot olive oil. We'll saute some, some shallots. Let me get this a little hotter. Can I help you here? Sure. We got some shallots in there. Okay. Put a little bit of garlic. Get, the garlic. get that up to up to speed. A little bit of salt. Make a little noise in here. Make sure that everybody knows we're cooking. Some fresh ground pepper. Hey everybody. Go ahead. Is that knocky or gnocchi? Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> now we're knocking. Knocky. All right. All right. Get them sizzling. Ooh, yeah, baby. We're sizzling now. Yeah. That looks good. It smells good, too. It does. It's a little early in the morning for garlic and uh, shallots. But, all right, we're going to deglaze with some chicken stock. Sweet. You get that going. And then into that, we're going to put some fresh herbs. Herbs. Put some peas. It's warm over here. You can take the heat, you know what they say, yeah, don't you? Yeah, get out of the kitchen. That's exactly it. All right, we got that. We'll bring that to a little bit of a boil, a little bit of a simmer here. Looks good. And How's the gnocchi? Get that you're, right, you're getting, man. You're getting close on that. <laughs> <laughs> close on that. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> We're going to put some... <laughs> Come on, Steve. Hold it together, man. I am holding hold it together. together. It's tough. I'm going to put some of this mascarpone cheese in here. And I'm going to let you swirl that around. Gotcha. It's almost like glue here. Yeah, there you go. Making a mess. Right, I'm going to reach around here. Gotcha. We're going to put some of the... We're going to put some of the pasta. We're going to put yeah. some of this dumplings. Let's put the dumplings in. Put some in. of this pasta in here. <laughs> All right, looking good. All right, so far so good. Lobster. Some lobster meat. Lobster. Hey, you know what's funny? I asked uh, Steve if he'd ever been to this uh, event, the, the Signature Chefs, and he looked at me and said, I won it last year. <laughs> <laughs> what can I tell you? We hey, won it. Hey, if I didn't know, I didn't know. There's nothing wrong with that. Keep it a stir. <laughs> okay, here, here how take we do, over. How are we doing on time so far? Take doing, over. We got a couple, uh, well, a couple more seconds. A couple more Actually, seconds. Actually, maybe a minute. We'll give you a minute. How about that? All right. We're going to let 60 this, seconds. We're going to let this cook down just a tad more. A little more pepper in here. So you're the defending champ. I'm the defending champ. You got you to gotta keep it together this year. You got something special planned? I think so. I think something so. Something a little bit different. We're going to taste this to make sure the sauce is okay. How are we doing? Pretty good. Here, I'll let you taste. Not with my spoon, though. Yeah. Stay away from the dumpling. Stay away from the, the dumpling. See for checking for salt and pepper. Nice. Pretty good. Yeah. Almost palatable. Yeah, I, I can take that. All right, we'll plate a quick dish of it. Okay. So is it finished? Mm-hmm. It's that quick. Oh, wow. Whoops. So we've got the gnocchi, the pasta, peas. Lobster meat. Ah, oh, nice. A little bit of color. All right, Steve. That's uh, that's it for uh, that's the that's what she looks like. The lobster dish. That looks great, man. Turned okay. out well. All right, March of Dimes Signature Chefs event Sunday. Founders in and Spa, Virginia Beach. HRSigChef.com. Thirty three six one zero 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 zero. Hey, best of luck this year, and uh, we'll Thank see you. how you do today because I think Scott's got something for you, man. I think he does too. All right. <laughs> Hey, it can be a challenge just to find the right clothes and shoes to wear to work. Imagine, though, if you have a physical disability that adds another layer of difficulty to finding the right look. October is Disability Employment Awareness Month and a chance to talk about the issues affecting a pretty sizable group that's in the working world. Cheryl Tan had the chance to talk with Stephanie Thomas, a disability fashion stylist who is passionate about giving people with physical challenges a way to dress for success. In today's What's Your Problem? Finding hot new fashions, not a problem since we're here at MacArthur Center in Norfolk, but it is a challenge for those with physical limitations. That's why we're talking with stylist Stephanie Thomas. 
Actually, I'm a disability fashion stylist, so that's actually what I specialize in, and that's what I like to do, because I was born with non-severe disability on my hand and my feet, and so I personally know the transformative power of styling people with disabilities. And this is pretty special because it's October Disability Employment Awareness Month. We're celebrating people in the workplace with disabilities, but they need to have something to wear. They need to look good when they go to work. So. Basically what I do as a disability fashion stylist is I say, okay, you're a wheelchair user, you have scoliosis, rheumatoid arthritis, let's find some great looks for you that are fuss free. So you're going to do a little show and tell for us, Stephanie, and you've dressed up some models for us. Actually, yeah, I had the honor of styling both Rillo Miles and Pavar Snipe, two different careers. We have First of all, Pavar, a media and PR specialist, so we were able to have a little fun with her. And then we have Rillo, who is a former law enforcement officer. And let me tell you about Rillo. He has a natural style, 6'5", big and tall, but when you translate that into being a wheelchair user, one of the difficulties that Rillo would deal with is slacks hanging over the side because the slacks in the stores today are not cut for the seated figure. So we went to IZ Adaptive, is a great option for the wheelchair user because the clothing is cut specifically for the seated figure. They don't have the excess clothes that causes breakdown of the skin, it feels very comfortable. The whole purpose and the whole goal is to have neater looking clothing when you're seated, just as when you're standing. Now, of course, I like to have a little fun, so we paired this top from the big and tall segment section of Dillard's. We paired it with stripes and a fun tie to make it pop. And instead of a normal blazer, we went with a leather blazer. So it gave this it gave a suit-like look with a, a edgier feel. So go for the custom fit pant, but you can come out and you can outfit yourself at your local mall. You just have to know what to look for. Pavar has rheumatoid arthritis and she's had rheumatoid arthritis since she was 11 years old. And one of the things that makes this outfit great is she can get in and out of it independently and there are no buttons, there are no zippers, and so it's no fuss dressing and it's cute. I decided to go with BCBG for Pavar because we, I wanted a pencil skirt for her. She has a petite frame. I love it. The skirt is awesome the top I wouldn't have picked this out for myself but I love the top I love the way it falls across my shoulders and the shoes again because I have a problem when it comes to wearing heels the shoes are really good for me because they're a fashionable stylish shoe that looks really good with this pencil skirt well of course when you look good you feel good don't give up don't say I have a physical challenge and so that means I have to wear sweatpants back away from the sweatpants there are other options out there. <laughs> Ask for what you want at these amazing stores. Talk to the manager, say, hey look, I'm gonna come in at a time where it's slow. Can someone work with me? You have to plan, you have to prepare, and you have to be able to speak up for yourself and say, look, I want to live my best life. This is not a dress rehearsal, and in order to do it, that means I gotta be vocal, I've gotta get out there, and I've got to put forth effort. So back away from the sweatpants. Back away from the sweatpants. And know that you're not alone. You are not alone. Right. Stephanie, thanks very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you. That's a great idea. You don't think about those things, you know? Mm -hmm. But even something small like Jenny's broken arm, it's temporary, but all of a sudden we got to figure out how to work around that. And there's even a company called Wounded Wear, kind of wow. taking off on the Wounded Warrior thing. Because think about all the troops now that have prosthetic arms, legs you know, amputees who mm -hmm. still, you know, need to need to dress and be able to dress themselves and want to dress well. It's a great, great idea. And, and pa Pavar always looks good. She does. Pavar always She's a good friend of ours from yeah. way yeah. back. Yeah. Pavar always yep. looks good. Yep. yep, she looks great. All right, Stephanie Thomas has a website, too. It is a great place to start. If you have a physical disability and you want to find the clothing that works for you, it's lovewhatyouwear, L-U-V, lovewhatyouwear.com, and we will link that to the HamptonRoadShow.com. Another great piece from Cheryl Ham. All right, today Postcards from Hampton Roads takes us to a spirited spot. The Cedar Hill Cemetery, it's a final resting place, but some believe its inhabitants get a little restless. Welcome. We have Welcome. way too much fun here in the, uh, in the bus center uh, talking about what you're talking about. 
<laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> all right, uh, all right. We were asking oh, about uh, paranormal activity, and you understand <laughs> yes. why. If you've mm. just tuned in, Arianne's having a bit of a day. <laughs> but we're going to have our postcard from Hampton Roads in the Cedar Hill Cemetery. Yeah. So we were asking, mm. are you a complete skeptic when it comes to people who claim that they have had paranormal experiences? Oh. Do you kind of believe, or have you had an experience yourself that made you a believer? This is Melissa's story. Go ahead, read that. It's kind of long, but all right. Melissa says, says, although I can't explain it, I'm a believer. I've had numerous unexplained instances. Most most unexplained was when I was a teenager. We were swimming in a lake. She said a lake that is now Greenbrier Parkway. <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> okay, after swimming across, uh, she said that a boy tried to drown her. He was successful. As I looked up for the last time, all I could see was light from the sun through the water. I started to sink. Next thing I knew, I had been pushed to the shore very, very fast, and my body was dragging the bottom. I looked back, and no one was there. Mm. Yay. Garland said, I wouldn't consider myself an active believer because I've not encountered such activity, hmm. but I'm not totally averse to the possibility. I guess I'll close with something strange in the name of you. She's going to try to get gonna me call. to sing. She'll do it. <laughs> Ghostbusters. I told you. All right. Uh, and then who writes checks anymore? I do. Carrie does. Yeah, I write checks. Sure. Every now and then. So we wanted to know. It's kind of like, like the ancient thing now is to pull out a check and write it. Everybody is all about technology, using the debit cards. Right. Uh, now it's like you're pulling out a flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, your book, like, Ooh. Hey, Zach, yeah, from Save by the Bell, remember that? <laughs> um, real quick comment, Red Miller says, not since the economy went downhill. And Mike Barnett says, I've written 14 checks in two and a half years. I use debit cards or pay online. I have an automatic draft for everything else. All right. Cool. Keep your comments coming. All right. All right. So the reason we were asking about uh, paranormal activity today is because of our postcards, mm -hmm. the Cedar Hill Cemetery in Suffolk. It can, it can actually be two very different places. It's peaceful by day. A little frightful by night. <laughs> Here's this week's postcard from Hampton Roads. Well, it can be an extremely beautiful place or a little bit on the spooky side, depending on when you come and why. We are in the Cedar Hill Cemetery in Suffolk. I want to introduce you to Kevin Seri. He's the Visitor Center Coordinator here in town. Today, I would say it's on the beautiful side, yes. but I guess it depends on how you feel about cemeteries. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the history of, of this place. Okay. Well, it always I was not a cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, originally, it was a working farm. Um, it wasn't until after the Revolutionary War uh, when a small uh, community church was constructed right on the hill here. Um, after that, the cemetery started and grew into the 32 acres um, it is now. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, first superintendents of the cemetery was responsible for planting the cedar trees. Um, originally, it was called Green Hill uh, Cemetery, but after he planted the cedar trees, it was a note called Cedar Hill Cemetery. Any prominent former citizens of Suffolk Hampton Roads buried here? A lot of uh, people if you live in Suffolk, you would recognize the names. Um, we also have Governor Godwin, Mills Godwin, is a two-term uh, governor of Virginia. He's buried here. Uh, the creator of the Mr. Peanut um, icon, he's buried here. As well as uh, Mr. Obesey, the founder of Planner's Peanut. He was buried here, but then after uh, the hospital he constructed in honor of his wife, um, the bodies were moved to the hospital. What do you think people enjoy about visiting? It's a really peaceful uh, place, a lot of history here, uh, a lot of neat uh, cemetery gravestones. Do you like spending time out here? I do. A lot of times uh, when it's cool, uh, like it is today, I will come out here for lunch and, and just walk around. It's, it's a nice place to get away from um, the busy um, life outside. It is very pretty during the day, but if you were to come back to the Cedar Hill Cemetery at night, you might have a very different experience if that's what you're looking for. I want to introduce you to Teresa Earls. She's the Tourism Development Coordinator with the Suffolk Visitor Center, and I know that there are some ghost walks that go through here, and this is the time of year where folks are actually looking to be a little scared out of their wits. <laughs> Definitely. We do like to scare them year-round, mm -hmm. but we have launched a new tour in the past year called Legends of Main Street, a Suffolk Ghost Walk, and it's not primarily in the cemetery, but we do take a little jaunt through after the evening has fallen. We have lots of interesting tales. We even have a video of a ghost that appeared during a Civil War ceremony here. We're a very historic community, so we've seen a lot of um, battle as far as the Civil War, and you've seen you know lots of people moving in and out, and so over the years, we've developed kind of a, 
a past, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So the spookiness is fun, and it's also historic, and you can learn about the people who founded Suffolk. And, and the, we say the, the people of the past have made Suffolk the city it is today. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so stop by the Visitor Center in Suffolk if you, you would like to take uh, a stroll through the Cedar Hill Cemetery and tell them the Hampton Road Show sent you. Oh, I just got spooked out. <laughs> I know. I put that video, the whole video from that um, Confederate ceremony is. I'm gonna go it, watch it's it. on YouTube and now it's on our Hampton Roadshow Facebook page. Yeah. It is a little. Ooh. It's spooky. I was looking for a ghost and I saw one. I saw you? one. Did you? <laughs> I did. All right. Don't forget, you can go to the visitor center too in Suffolk if you want to take the lantern tour, the legends of Main Street, and or if you just want to kind of learn a little bit more about Cedar Hill Cemetery. Pretty fascinating All place. Right. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. and scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get to uh, taste swordfish and Noki. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Noki. You got the answer for the question. <laughs> Pop quiz. Yeah. Let's take a look here real quick. Uh, East Norfolk to Virginia Beach, 60. It's mostly near the water and famous Polly from the 80s, 90s. What's the answer? Shore Drive. Good girl. Uh, ding, ding. No help. You get the note. Really? No I was going to give it to you today. No, I, Ariane gave it to me today. All right, we'll see. <laughs> let's go to the kitchen. All right, let's go. go. Step right up and pass it on around. Cut into the sword. I, sword I gotta try the sword. There you I've go. never had sword. Gnocchi's so, so good. Go for it. Put it in on it. You know. Seen that right? Gnocchi. Chop it on up. Gnocchi. I'm gonna play guys. And Here we go. Steve? So, gnocchi? No. What is it? Gnocchi? <laughs> what are we calling it? Please say it again for me. Gnocchi. Gnocchi. It's very good. There you go. Outstanding. That is very yeah. delicious. Outstanding. I've never had swordfish and I just had it on the end row. Yeah, serving it up. Yummy. There we go. It's delicious. Let me put just a That's touch good. more sauce on this. Oh, we got sauce. Oh, you got to oh, have yeah. sauce, you on some it. sauce on it. Sauce Thank you. Sauce me up. So, your restaurant is 100 years old there in Suffolk. Steve, anything uh, <laughs> unexplained? <laughs> <laughs> Any haunted pancetta in that kitchen? No. <laughs> haunted pancetta? <laughs> No, but the gnocchi keep knocking late at night. <laughs> really? I think that's Chris. That's Chris at the oh, that's Chris doing that? Mm -hmm. Trying to figure that it out. could be. <laughs> Scott and Steve, outstanding. Scott, this is Thank delicious. You. Just, you just need to see that big piece of lobster. Like, Steve doesn't mess around. <laughs> but you know what? I love you like both, the swordfish? both of it swordfish is delicious. Is I'm going to have to go with the swordfish mm. because I've never had swordfish. I didn't know what to expect. It's very moist and tender. Thank, Thank you. you for introducing that to me. It can be me. dry if you're not careful. Swordfish can. But that's moist. This is still, it's moist. Yeah, it's the bacon great. wrapping. And the mushrooms are outstanding, too. Yeah, the Thanks right. to our audience today, Senior Services of Southeastern Virginia. Thanks a lot for coming by today, guys. All right, more on the recipes, the how to for both of these fine dishes will be at thehamptonroadshow.com along with much more on all the segments you saw today. And we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Have Best a good of morning. Luck this weekend, guys. See Thank you. Good you guys. Yeah. Outstanding.